So, where are we at with non-invasive continuous glucose monitoring at the beginning of 2024? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to look at which of the companies that we've talked about before are still in the game, what progress they've made. We're going to look at a few additional categories and a few additional companies. And at the end of the video, I will give you my prediction who, if anyone, is going to release uh, a non-invasive continuous glucose monitoring device this year. So stay tuned. So hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is happy and healthy. So those of you who are regular subscribers might recognize that uh, this video in effect is a follow-on to the video that I released, I believe in maybe November of 2022, which looked at uh, which companies were working on non-invasive continuous glucose monitoring and where they were at and what they were achieving. And so now a little bit less than a year and a half later, we're going to take a look and we're going to start by looking at the same three categories that we looked at in the last video, namely RF, radio frequency, PPG, which is laser light, and of course biosensors. And so you will recall, just as a quick reminder, that the first two categories, we send a signal from a device into the skin, either radio frequency or laser light at different frequencies, and try to measure as it bounces back um, the signal that comes back from the interstitial fluid, the ISF, most of the time for most of these devices. The biosensor category, on the other hand, looks to pull some of the ISF through the skin to the top of the skin where there is a chemical sensor that can measure it. We're also going to look at a couple of other categories. One is an algorithmic and the final one is voice. If you want to learn more about the technical aspects of all these technologies, I have a couple of other videos. I will uh, provide links to them in the description below because I'm not going to go over that in this video. That would sort of be uh, redundant and repetitive for those of you who had a chance to look at my prior videos. So, in this video, I'm going to focus on commercial efforts, which are working on bringing a product to market and hopefully are relatively close to doing that. You will also hear me refer to something called the MARD, which stands for Mean Absolute Relative Difference. It's a measure that's expressed in percentage terms, and it measures sort of the difference between two, two devices. A reference device which is already approved and a new device that we're testing to see really how big the difference between them is. Uh, what the FTA is looking for in terms of approval is an MARD of less than 10% and so for a number of the devices that we're going to be talking about the companies have reported them and obviously we're going to look at them and share them with you. Before we jump in, a disclaimer I have no relationship with any of these companies. I have no private proprietary information. These videos are, this video is based completely and totally on publicly available information. I am not and will not be compensated by anyone for this effort, least of all any of these manufacturers. I'm doing this on my own free time out of the goodness of my heart. So you're welcome and enjoy. And with that, Let's dive in. So in the prior video, we had four radio frequency companies, Hagar, No Labs, GlucoRx, and Movana. So how are they doing? Well, Hagar seems to be doing quite well. You will recall, hopefully, that they measure glucose in the venous blood as opposed to the interstitial fluid. They're the only ones to do that, as far as I can tell, and I think it is excellent that they do. Uh, given the challenges that we've discussed uh, in other videos to sort of correlate uh, uh, blood glucose to interstitial fluid glucose. Not impossible, but obviously introduces another element that has to be addressed, both in terms of concentrations and the relationships between them as well as timing. So Hager has released some data from... Uh, their studies with the Weizmann Institute of Science. 
Uh, this is a study of 75 uh, diverse participants using their G-Wave device. They've achieved an MARD of 6.7%, which is excellent, with 97% of the points falling within zone A, and obviously the remaining three within zone B of the Clark error grid. They plan to conduct two additional studies, one at the Schneider Children's Medical Center of Israel, the other one at the Jeb Center of, uh, for Health Research in Tampa, Florida. They also announced a partnership with a Taiwanese-based multinational chip manufacturer specializing in RF chips to mass produce their chip, which is obviously encouraging. And in August of 2023, they closed a C round of $5 million, bringing their total money raised to $25 million dollars. So overall they seem to be making very good progress. So exciting. No Labs. No Labs has experienced some changes. I believe they had a change in CEO CEOs with the founder returning as the CEO. They have a new device which they call the Generation One and I think they've been working on their software as well. Now at this point in time their device is not a continuous glucose monitor. It's a device uh, that will fit into the user's pocket, so it can be used uh, periodically, but obviously not continuously. It is, however, not invasive. They've released results from a few studies uh, using this uh, Gen 1 device and uh, their software, which they called Lightning Gradient Boosting Machine, or Light GBM, whatever that means. <laughs> Uh, and they are reporting that they've achieved an MARD comparing their Gen 1 device to the Dexcom G6 uh, continuous glucose monitor of 13%. They then went back, conducted some additional research, some 3,300 observations, 300 plus hours from uh, 13 healthy participants uh, and, and achieved uh, additional improvements in the software. I think they came up with an MARD of 11.3%, uh, non-glycemic 10.8%, uh, hyperglycemic 16%, uh, and so they certainly seem to be making progress, which is obviously good to see. GlucoRx with their biosensor with an X, uh, they've redesigned their device in a very interesting way. In particular, they now have three sensors in their device, which I think is very clever and very innovative, provided, of course, they can reconcile the potential differences between the data from those three devices. I guess that's what AI is for at the end of the day, right? So they have an RF radio frequency sensor, they have a PPG laser sensor, and they have a bioimpedance sensor. So with that, they've achieved an MARD of 10.4%, so right on the cusp. Uh, and they claim to be able to detect glucose across a very wide range of uh, from 2 millimole per deciliter of uh, blood to 30 millimole per deciliter of blood. Looks promising, but no information of any clinical trials that they would be conducting, at least not at clinicaltrials.gov that I've been able to find. If you know otherwise, obviously, please let us know. I would be excited to, to know. Movano, as best as I can tell, they are very much focused on their EV ring and blood pressure. No new information that I've been able to find on blood glucose. Which brings us to the next company, which was actually not on the original list, but is also in the radio frequency uh, technology bucket. It's Afron Tech, and I've made a separate video about them. They have a device called Glucoware, which is different from most of the other devices in that it measures uh, blood glucose on the underside of the wrist. Once again, those of you who are subscriber to this, subscribers to this channel will know well that I'm not a huge fan of measuring anything, quite frankly. 
uh, on top of the wrist. Yes, it's a convenient place to have a screen. It's a very convenient place to have a watch, which is why we wear watches there. But it's a really, really bad place to measure any biological signals. The underside of the wrist is actually a little bit better. So in terms of Afrin Tech, they've gotten some money from the EU, $2.4 million. They have unfortunately not released any new data in terms of how their device is performing. So in that regard, they're a little bit of a dark horse, but presumably they're still working on it and hopefully making some progress. That brings us to the next category, which is the PPG, the light frequency, the laser light category. And we looked at three companies, Rockley Photonics, Diamond Tech, and RSP Systems. Now, once again, We've had a few videos since then about Rockley. They've had a rocky time. They filed for Chapter 11 in the U.S. They've emerged from Chapter 11. Their CEO, Andrew Rickman, who I believe is one of the founders, uh, stepped away from being the CEO during the Chapter 11. He's now come back. They have a reconstituted board. They have new financing. I have a separate video that you can look at all of that. However, and very disappointingly, their focus doesn't seem to be blood glucose right now. Their BioPTX device, which they're showcasing on their website, focuses on other things like heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration, VO2, temperature, and hydration. Nothing new here. They also have released studies on blood pressure. Uh, and have fairly extensive conversations about how to go about measuring it. And I believe they're trying to negotiate with the FTA about how to do that. There are some interesting technical issues involved in how you do that when you don't have traditional cuffs or lines and things like this. They do mention a human study involving 40 diabetes uh, subjects over a 10-week period. So maybe they haven't completely given up on diabetes yet, but certainly they haven't released any results or showcased any product, even a prototype that is uh, endeavoring to measure blood glucose. So we shall wait and see, I guess. Diamond Tech, they have, uh, they're sponsoring a study with 36 participants which is uh, registered with clinicaltrials.gov at Alm University, starting November 23, end date February 24, so it's ongoing as I'm making this video. Name of the study, Ability of Non-Invasive Glucose Monitoring by Using Photothermal Deflectometry. Uh, good luck to them, and hopefully they will release their results uh, shortly thereafter. RSP Systems. Um, they have a January announcement, January 23, not 24, I believe, that they've entered into a collaboration with a global leader within the field of VSEL, laser technology called Trump Photonics. And nothing to do with the Donald. This is a Trump that ends in PF. It's a German company. And they're working with them on miniaturizing their technology to ultimately bring a wearable factor. They did release a, did release a study in ACS sensors under the title of Accurate Post-Calibration Predictions for Non-Invasive Glucose Measurement in People Using Confocal Roman Spectrometry. Roman Spectrometry is what they're doing, but um, let me see, what results did they achieve? Oh yes, 160 subjects MARD for the subset with two, type 2 diabetes is 14.3%, uh, and for type 1 diabetes was hired 19.9, so practically 20%. So they are not there, but they're clearly working on it, and hopefully the relationship that they have with Trump will uh, improve their chip. One additional new company in this category from Singapore called AXTA. They conducted a trial which is actually registered with clinicaltrials.gov in 2023 and published a paper, uh, but did not report an MARD, so I'm not going to drag you through the results here. They're simply 
not that comparable to everybody else if they're missing an MARD, so we shall see how they progress. That brings us to the biosensor category in which we have three companies. You might recall Glucomodicum, PK Vitality, and Graphware. Uh, Glucomodicum, the only news I have about them is that they've uh, hired, I think they're working with a design consultancy called Philips uh, Medicize to improve the design of their product. They've released a video in which they claim to be very happy with that collaboration, but they haven't shared any new results. Uh, PK Vitality, no news, and uh, Graphware, no news from them either. A new company in this category called Nomura with their Beat technology. And once again, as is the case for all the companies in this category, they are looking to use some kind of technology, in their case electric currents, to draw small amounts of selected molecules through the skin to the surface of the skin to measure it there. They are CE approved in Europe. I haven't seen anything about US approvals or any US trials and having heard anything about any MARD that they've reported, but um, I wanted to put it on the map so you're aware of them. And so that brings us to the new categories, namely algorithmic and voice. We've uh, dabbled a little bit in the algorithmic category before when we reviewed the Huawei Watch 4, which claims to be able to do that in that particular manner. And there is actually good theoretical basis for looking at other vital signs to see whether they can predict blood glucose levels. Uh, and it deals with the heart function. And in particular, the impact and the damage on nerve cells caused by high blood glucose and how it relates to heart function and other vital signs. Uh, particular cardiovascular Autonomic neuropathy, uh, or CAN, is a type of dysfunction commonly found in people with diabetes. It results from damage to the nerves that lead to the heart and blood vessels. There's been significant research done in sort of uh, uh, this and, and, and other aspects of how uh, blood glucose has an impact on arrhythmias, heart failures, and other things like that. And it seems to have both a long-term and a short-term impact. I found an interesting study where they gave people glucose and measured, uh, obviously, their glucose levels following that uh, ingestion uh, and, and measured uh, cardioautonomic stress responses, so the significant and, and registered significant declines in heart rate variability, which is really what we're talking about here, uh, as well as uh, waveform impacts. So certainly something that's uh, that's a valid approach, and, and I'm glad that people are looking at it. We talked about a Huawei Watch 4. It's been released in a number of different countries, not in the U.S. for a variety of different reasons. It looks purportedly at 10 vital signs uh, and uh, alerts users when their blood glucose peaks so they can hopefully figure out what it is that's causing those peaks, most likely something that they ate. There are no published studies that I've been able to find on the watch for and its um, uh, validity and reliability. Hopefully they will be conducting them and releasing them, so to be seen. There is another company in this category called the Zumio Inc., which does something equally, if not even more interesting. They are looking to use smartphones, and in particular the laser red light that we have in the smartphones, to see if uh, they can detect elevated uh, blood glucose levels and measure blood glucose in that way. They have um, AI technology called the Deep Neural Network Score Analysis, and uh, they have an app and they're actually conducting clinical trials on that. And, and what they're looking for again is heart rate, heart rate variability, uh, and, and related uh, biomarkers. Um, so that will be interesting to see. Now I know that um, some of you probably wondering about 
Apple, there's been rumors about them, and there have been rumors that they would be releasing something similar to a Huawei watch. Uh, there have been conflicting information if they're going to be using PPG technology, light signals, or what, whatever, or if they're going to be using something else. I am not terribly optimistic, to be honest with you, least of all after the dispute that they're currently having with uh, Nassima around pull socks. It really puts into question their technical chops and their strategy as far as I'm concerned, quite frankly. So uh, disappointing, but I wouldn't hold my breath. That brings us to the voice category. And once again, I made a video a while back about uh, a company called Click Applied Sciences that had released a paper in Mayo Proceedings called Analysis and Prediction of Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus Using Smartphone Recorded Voice Segments. Uh, and once again, there is actually pretty good uh, theoretical basis for this. Uh, research has shown that uh, sustained high levels of blood glucose have an impact on the vocal cord, and uh, that's what they're trying to measure and determine and calibrate. And so... Uh, probably not something to be used as a continuous glucose monitoring. Obviously, we talk a lot, but uh, we don't talk that much, hopefully. But certainly can something that could be done periodically, hopefully, to measure short-term variations to be seen. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video. So, are we going to get something in 2024 that can measure blood glucose non-invasively? And from whom? Well, so here is my perspective, and I'm going to divide it into two categories, starting with the algorithmic for, you know, maybe all of us who are worried well or want to look after our health. And I really like what I'm seeing here. I'd love to see some data on the Huawei Watch 4, which, although not available in the U.S., is available in other places and could be very useful for many people. And I like what Azumia is doing with smartphones because, of course, of how prevalent they are and how easily it would make it for everybody to check in on their uh, blood glucose levels, at least periodically. So I'm rooting for them, and I actually think it looks uh, pretty good. Now, uh, what about devices that are actually capable of generating numeric blood glucose values that people with diabetes and the rest of us too, of course, could use. Um, I really like what GlucoRx is doing with their biosensor, with those three sensors that we mentioned, and their MARD, which is just a tad above 10%, I think looks good. So hopefully that is making good progress, I think. I also like Hagar's chances. Uh, once again, I like that they're accessing venous blood, not interstitial fluid, fluid for measuring uh, glucose. Their MARD well below 10% uh, in their trials at the Weizmann Institute, which is a top-notch institution, so I have tremendous faith in those results. They've raised money, they've contracted with... Uh, a chip maker. So that all lines up very well. And, and they're conducting trials, which I presume uh, are doing with the intention of submitting them, hopefully, to the FTA if they can repeat the results that they have from their prior trials. The dark horse here, I think, is Afron Tech. I, I like their approach, as I've mentioned, of measuring it on the underside of the wrist, which has better prospects of capturing good data. We haven't seen any recent data from them, and that's what makes them the dark horse. So where does that leave us? If I were to place a bet, I would place my bet on Hagar. Uh, they've raised the money. They have the chip-making capability now. They have uh, good data. They need to and are conducting some trials to, to bring to the FDA. So um, hopefully that all works well, and if it does, uh, there is every reason to believe that they could be in a position to bring something to the market in 2024. So good progress, I think, 
uh, a number of different uh, companies that are moving things forward, not as fast as we would necessarily like them to, but nonetheless, I am still very optimistic for this year. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Be well. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, please subscribe and uh, let me know if you liked it. Take good care. Be well. Bye-bye.